Buckle in, because this is a wild one. X Detective. Whenever the news says X, you should perk up a little bit, because it's not retired. And this is a career field. Allegedly, X Detective grooms a 15-year-old child who he's in charge of in the Explorer program with the police department. She gets pregnant by him during the pandemic. He allegedly kills her and makes it look like a suicide. Standing just under five feet tall, Sarah Birchmore joins the Police Explorer program at 13 years old. When she's 15, she meets Matthew Farwell. Farwell reaches out on Facebook and a sexual relationship starts soon thereafter. Real quick while we're here, would having a bark phone prevented all this? From what I read, Birchwell's one of those kids that just had a rough life and never can catch a break. That was true in most of my cases. And apparently mom and grandma were her support structure. Now remember, this all started 10 years ago. And he was just arrested last week. Now in the same timeline, Farwell meets and marries his wife. During the pandemic, Farwell's wife is having their third child. And Birchmore tells him, I'm 10 weeks pregnant and you're the daddy. And you're going on the birth certificate. Two most dangerous times in a domestic violence situation, pregnancy and when you're trying to leave. Obviously, Farwell doesn't want this to get out. He tells her, I'll come over and we'll talk. Birchmore apparently has a disagreement with one of her friends that knows the whole story. And that friend gets mad and calls the police department and tells them, hey, this has been going on for the past 10 years since she was 15. Farwell allegedly goes over to talk. He leaves about 20 minutes later. Birchmore doesn't show up for work for several days. They do a welfare check. She's found in what's called a sitting hanging, where she was found partially hanging from a doorknob by a duffel bag strap. First medical examiner rules it death by suicide. At some point, the FBI gets involved and things just aren't sitting right because you got motive and you got opportunity. They call in Dr. Bill Smock. Weirdly, I happen to know Dr. Smock. He was the expert that I went to on a lot of my strangulation cases. Looking at the photos of the crime scene in the original ME's report, Dr. Smock notices that the buckle of the bag in the photos is up by her ear, but the impression of the buckle is on her chest. And he says that's inflicted blunt force trauma. He also notices she has abrasions on either side of her nose. And he says it's consistent with victims forcing their face back and forth when they're being smothered. And lastly, her hyoid bone is broken. Thin bone in the neck. It's been explained to me that on hangings, it's up here. The bone is down here. So the hyoid bone is more consistent with strangulation. You may also remember that's what they're saying about the Epstein case as well. Yeah, just dropped a bomb. FBI uses Apple phones motion tracking, and they determine that Birchmore's phone stops moving for the last time while Farwell is still in the apartment. They examine her phone. Between that and her computer, there are 32,000 texts between her and Farwell. Her behavior is also not consistent with suicide. She's happy about the pregnancy, scheduling things with a photographer, orders DoorDash, and her friends say that she was excited, not suicidal. There's a lot I skipped over from this affidavit. It's 45 pages long. It struck me as interesting that the agent that's assigned to this has only been with the FBI for a year. That's a heck of an early case. But sometimes it just takes a young person with motivation and a set of fresh eyes to crack a case. Just from the affidavit, it looks like they got him dead to rights on underage sex with a minor. The murder evidence seems to be circumstantial, but there's no telling what else they have. And I've said it before, like on the Idaho case, the feds usually don't take a case unless it's a slam dunk. I'll be following this one. Be aware and be safe.